The Game of Thrones prequel series is a hit all over the world. There isn't a doubt about it. However, some fans have criticized the show for being a tad dull and boring. In this video, we'll look at everything there is to know about the show and why people think it hasn't fared well compared to Game of Thrones. So let's get into it. First up, what is the show about? House of the Dragon is a prequel to the hugely popular show Game of Thrones. It takes place 172 years before the events of the main series series and focuses on the history of the House Targaryen when they were at the golden age of their reign, thus the name House of the Dragon. We're used to only seeing the Targaryens on the brink of extinction or constantly trying to fight for their birthright, the Iron Throne. Jon deserved it more than anyone else. But in this, we'll see them roaming around, or should we say flying around, all over Westeros with their fleet of dragons. Like the main show, House of the Dragon is also based on the book A Dance with Dragons by by George R. R. Martin. We really hope he finishes the last one soon. We assume that the show will follow the storyline and the events will lead up to the Great Targaryen Civil War, which marks the start of the end for the Great Valerian House. Though we'll probably get the whole epic war sequence in the later seasons of the show, because for now, we're getting used to the new, well, not technically new, but the old Westeros. A Westeros in which we won't find the Lannisters in control of everything. Rather, there are new houses new power dynamics, and much more. So yeah, we can't wait to see how all this unfolds. And gosh, it feels so good to be back in Westeros. Next up, how is it received by fans? The show seems to be a massive hit with fans. And if you don't believe us, then just take a look at the numbers. House of the Dragon had the most watched season premiere this year, beating the fifth season of Stranger Things. We all know how big that was. Like, come on, it brought an 80s song back from the dead. Hopefully, this gives you an idea idea of how big this whole season is. Okay, so getting views is one thing, but how did those viewers feel after watching the series? What were the reviews? Though they weren't as good as the main show, The House of the Dragon received a solid rating of 8.8 .8 on IMDb and 85% on Rotten Tomatoes. Pretty decent. As for the characters, well, they were pretty well received too. Like Millie Alcock, who had her debut on this show by the way, has been making headlines and has acquired herself a lot of brand deals as well. Another fan favorite character is the infamous rogue prince Daemon Targaryen, who's played by the Doctor Who star Matt Smith. His character is the typical rebellious rogue rebel royal who just wants to do whatever they want, which seems pretty similar to the princess. We'll look at their relationship later on in the video, so make sure to stick around for that. Not to mention, why do people think of it as boring? Doesn't make sense, right? Like we just saw how much the people love it, and well, people don't like boring stuff. So what on earth is going on? Well, this view is reserved for a select few who probably are fans of the whole overused, unfunny joke genre with colorful worlds and aesthetics. Nope, we aren't targeting Marvel fans at all. Why would you think that? And to be fair, these aren't some random people, but instead fans of the original show who just don't seem to find the sequel as good as the Game of Thrones. Their first complaint is that it's all really fast paced and it's getting hard to pay attention. Like in five episodes, episodes four years passed in the timeline, and we barely got any character development apart from Daemon and Rhaenyra. We also got this fling between the knight Sir Criston Cole and Rhaenyra, but there had been only one or two actual conversations between the characters, so their whole narrative just feels forced and kinda cringy. As for the rest of the characters, we only see Alicent as a pawn, whereas in the books, she's the one moving the pawns, and King Viserys just keeps on getting cuts from the Iron Throne and always has some new wound. Other complaints have been, well, there are the silly ones saying that, oh, there needs to be more comedy and colorful aesthetics. Like, please keep your opinions to yourself. And how could a super mega budget show with dragons be boring? But, well, we all have our own opinions. Other news. First up, we've got an early preview of episode five. We're almost at our halfway mark for House of the Dragon. Time really does go by fast. And while we wait for this Sunday's episode, HBO released a couple of stills from episode 5. The series of photos kind of shows how things will roll in the episode and start with King Viserys traveling with Princess Rhaenyra. The father and daughter duo are headed off to Driftmark to meet an angry friend, Corlys Valerion, and the queen who never was. We didn't see them both in last week's episode, but they were constantly referred to because the entire council thinks it's the best for the realm that the princess is married off to their eldest son. In the next stills, we see the young pair on what seems 
seems to be Driftmark. It makes sense that the pair at least get to know each other before spending the rest of their life together. It seems like the talks worked, because in the next episode, we'll be getting a wedding in the throne room at King's Landing. If we've learned anything from past Game of Thrones weddings, it's that they're never just weddings. There's always something thrown into the mix. Apart from Rhaenyra, we also get some stills of Alice and Hightower. Both of them, by the way, will be starring in their last episode for this season, because then we'll get that famous time jump. That's going to be one hard goodbye. Alicent, in one still, was standing next to her father, Otto Hightower, who recently got fired from his role as Hand. In the other still, we see Alicent at the wedding rocking a stunning green dress, who many will recognize from the books, The Reign of the Green Queen Begins. Moving on, the mystery behind the famous cat's paw dagger is finally explained. Before the show premiered, we all knew that it would be somehow connected to the main show, like there would be references to the houses and locations, but no one could guess that just in the first episode we'll get the whole revelation of how the main storyline was predicted before the time of Aegon the Conqueror himself. Confused? Don't worry, that's why we're here. And there are some pretty big spoilers ahead. So we all remember that famous Valyrian steel dagger that Arya used to kill the Night King, but what we didn't know was that it actually belonged to the great conqueror King Aegon. The blade made its appearance in the House of the Dragon, and what followed blew our minds. The whole story of A Song of Ice and Fire was Aegon's visionish dream. He saw the whole long night, and every Targaryen ruler has since then prepared for its arrival. That kinda explains why the White Walkers waited so long to prepare an army. The Targaryens were finally off the throne. In the most recent episode, we also saw that the blade contained an inscription that prophesied the whole Jon Snow is the prince that was promised. Surprising how some people find this dull. This, of course, isn't from the books, and only time will tell how this all will play a role in the events of the show. Hopefully, it won't be ignored like it was in Game of Thrones. And to wrap things up, what was Millie Alcock's take on the whole episode 4 drama? Millie Alcock has become a fan favorite for her portrayal of the young Princess Rhaenyra, though in this week's episode, we got a pretty, how do we put this, bold portrayal as the episode gave us how intimate the Targaryens really were with each other. Most of the fans knew how the Targaryens ran things, but we didn't expect this so early on in the show. In the fourth episode, we saw Rhaenyra and her uncle, the rogue prince Daemon Targaryen, coupling. The two of them escaped to some sort of brothel together, and were also seen by the hand spies. In an interview, the young actress gave us the whole reasoning behind the couple's motives. According to her, Daemon is the type of person she would have been had Rhaenyra been a boy. She sort of looks up to him, and both are pretty similar as well. They are both sort of rebels, who don't care about the royal customs or traditions and want to do things their way. That does make sense, except for the fact that they are similar because they share the same blood. But these Westeroses never listen. That's a wrap for this video. What are your opinions on the show so far? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.